We've all heard of the dry principle, don't repeat yourself. It's a good rule to live by in development. If you repeat your hard-coded value all over the place, then when you change it, it's going to be a pain to go and find them all, and you might miss some, and that's not good. But we violate dry every day in web development. Check out this router link tag. It's got that hard-coded string in there. You probably have tons of links like this sprinkled throughout your application to the home page, to settings and search pages, and they all have these hard-coded strings. But what do those URLs change? Do you search and replace through the code base for that manually? Sometimes that'll work, other times you'll make mistakes. And what happens when you bring on someone new and they don't realize that the product details route actually means that you add a slash details to the end of the route? So I have a solution. It's called declarative routing, and it fits on top of your existing router. It doesn't replace it. It just makes it better. So instead of having a hard-coded string, you'll have something like product.link, and you give it the product ID, and it's the same link, but it's just better. Instead of that details route string, you'll have product details.link, and then you give it the product ID. The parameters in the URL map to properties on a component. Mind-blowing, right? And if the URL changes, then all of the links change automatically. Awesome. The components are type safe, so you get hinting for all the parameters. And because of real components, you can use IDE tooling to find out where they're used. So the routing is really solid. Let's jump in and take a quick look at how this works. So I've got a test app here. It's a Pokemon app. You can click on any of these and actually get some details on it. You can go to a search page and type in a search, filters that down, and then you can click on one and actually get to that details page. So just like we had the product detail route, we have the Pokemon detail route in this case. All right, let's go take a look at how this is happening in the code. So we have a basic Next.js app writer application. We've got some components for the Pokemon card, grid, and so forth. We've got the Pokemon details route. We got a search route with a search list in it. And then we've got our API route over here. And even cooler, this system handles API routes. Stick around and check it out. This is actually maybe a viable alternative to TRPC. All right, let's go try this out. So in my shell, I'm going to do MPX declarative routing. Declarative routing is the name of the package. And this will tell us what our options are. So we've got the init option to initialize our application and then the build option to update our application. So I'm going to do init to initialize our application. It's automatically going to find that we have our source in source app. And then you get to decide where you want to put the routes implementation. I'm going to put it in source routes. Then experimentally, there's open API support. I'm not going to deal with that at the moment. I'm just going to hit no. And then I get a nice little summary about what it's done. It's added five .info files to the project. I'll show you what those are in a second. And it's added this declarative routing support in the source routes directory. So let's go take a look at the file system now. So at the top level, it's created a declarative routing config.json file. It tells it what the mode is, that it's in Next.js mode, where the source of the application is, and where the source of the routes directory is. And then it gives you a really nice little readme, actually. It tells you a little bit about what declarative routing is. It gives you a list of all the routes that it found and what it named those routes. It automatically names them, and you might want to change that. It tells you how to use these routes in your application. It tells you what to do if you've changed the name of the route or changed the location of a route. That just basically comes down to running the dr build command, which is added to the package JSON. And then it gives you a bunch of to-do items that you can check off as you go and change around your system so you're no longer using the link tag. Cool thing is, the system will 100% work as is. You can just opt into this over time. All right, let's go back into our project. Now over in this new source routes directory, we can see that we have two files. The first is index. This index file is what's created for you by the declarative routing system. It went through and looked at all of the files in the source app and created one .info files for them, and then it loaded in the data from the .info file. That's on lines 9 through 13. You can go and see it bringing in each one. And then it exports a bunch of route components. It found the home route on slash. It found the detail route and called it Pokemon Pokemon ID. We'll fix that in a bit. And it found the search route, which is a page. And then for the API routes, it found slash API slash Pokemon and slash API slash Pokemon slash ID. We'll get to the API routes in a bit. Let's start off by converting our layout. So if I go over here to the layout, I got two links down there, one for the home page and one for the search page. So let's change the home page link first. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to import home from routes. And then with that home component, I'm just going to change link to home 
dot link. Now I no longer need the href, and that's it. Now, obviously home's never gonna change position, but anywhere in my application I wanna go home, I just use home dot link and it automatically goes to slash. I don't have to put in slash anywhere else. Now it's just as easy for search. So let's go check, it, check that out. So for search, I'm gonna use search dot link. And again, I can remove the href. Now let's see if that actually works. So back in my application, I've got my header at the top. These are the link that I've just changed. So I'm gonna click on home and it works just fine. I click on search and it works just fine as well. But search actually handles a query string. So how do we handle that? So now we'll take a look at what these .info files are about. So in the page.info, I have my declaration for the routes. So in this case, I'm saying I've got the search route and there are no parameters associated with it. There's nothing in the URL that's a parameter, but there are search parameters. So to put support that, I simply add search and then I give it a Q value. The Q value is the query. So if I now go over to my landing page, in my search link, I can say search, I can give it an object, and I get hinting that for that Q value. So I can say, for example, bulb. And now when I hit search link on the header, I expect that it's gonna to go to the search page with bulb. So I'll go back to the home, I'll click on search, and there we go. Awesome. So what we're looking at here is a Pokemon grid. It has a bunch of cards in it. That grid has links around each one of the cards and those links go to the Pokemon detail page. So let's see how easy it is to change out those links. So if I go back up to our components, I go to Pokemon grid. So I'm gonna bring in Pokemon detail from routes. And I notice that that isn't defined. So why isn't that defined? Well, if I go back over here to my page info for the Pokemon detail route, I can see that it automatically named it Pokemon Pokemon ID. That's not great. So I'm going to change it to Pokemon Detail. Now there's only two times you actually need to run the builder. That's actually going to go scan through all the files and rebuild the index. One is when you change the name. The other is when you physically move the route. So in this case, we've changed the name. So let's go and rerun the builder. To do that, I'm going to go create another terminal. And now down in package JSON, we can see that the init automatically added two things, dr build and dr build watch. So that's actually run the builder for us. So I'm going to use dr build. And that completed. And we get a nice little report about what changes this made. In this case, it's changed the Pokemon Pokemon ID component to the Pokemon detail component. Cool. So let's see if that works. So now, okay, I got my Pokemon detail link. So now let's go and use it. Cool. So now we no longer need an href, but we do need to specify the Pokemon ID. So let's do that. There we go. We've got our hinted Pokemon ID. So let's go and put in curly brackets and then put in p.id. Okay, that's not happy. So why isn't that happy? Well, I have a number. The Pokemon ID is a number and what it expects is a string. So how would I change that? So I'm going to go back over into my code, going to go into that Pokemon detail, and I can see that the Pokemon ID is defined as a string. So I'm just going to change it to number. Hit save, and now immediately the TypeScript is fixed. So when you change the types on these things, you don't need to rerun that builder. Now just for fun, over in the Pokemon card, I'm actually gonna bring in this Pokemon detail route. And then right below the name, I'm gonna add a div, and I'm gonna use that product Pokemon detail in a different way. The Pokemon detail route is actually a function. So you can give it the parameters. In this case, that's gonna be the Pokemon ID, and then I'll give it the current Pokemon ID. I'll hit save, and now I'll take a look over my app, and we can see that we have the detail routes listed there. If I click on this, that Pokemon detail link works just fine, awesome. But now let's have a little fun. So I'll go back into the home page, and we can see that we're reusing that Pokemon card. So we see all those URLs. Now keep a close eye on those URLs. If I go back over my Visual Studio code, and instead of dr build, I'm gonna use dr build watch. That's gonna run a watch on that source directory. Now I'm gonna change the Pokemon folder name to Bloof. I'll go back into my browser and we can see that all of those links have dynamically changed to Floof. So how did that actually happen? Well, we can see in the terminal that that watch system was actually looking at those directories and automatically detected the change of Pokemon to Floof. And then over in the routes file, you can see that it automatically updated that route. Now if I go and change it back, it automatically changes back. So cool. Of course, you really wouldn't need a watch like this all the time. This is mostly when you're just kind of laying out the fundamental routes for your application if you're building a new one.
Now, of course, right down the bottom here, we had some API routes. So what about that? Well, the thing that's actually making the search is over in the search page, and it's the search list component. So down here, we have a simple fetch for our API Pokemon. It's got the query on it. So we can do better. So let's go into our API, go to route info, and I'm going to call this Pokemon search API. Now, there are no params, but there are some search params. So I'll add the Q search param. And then even cooler, I get to define what the result of the get is. So in this case, I'm going to bring in a Pokemon schema from types. That's another Zod schema for Pokemon. And I'm just going to say that we get an array of that back. Let's save. And now, since my watch is still watching, we can see that it actually made changes. So now I've got a get Pokemon search API. So now let's go over to our search list. We'll bring that in. from the routes, and then down in our search, instead of awaiting a fetch, we will await the get Pokemon search API. So what do we need to send to that? Well, first off, there's no parameters, so I'm just gonna put an empty object in there, but there are search parameters, which would be the second argument. So let's see what those parameters are by command space. It tells me that I have a Q parameter I can use. I'll put in the query. And now the really cool thing is that I don't even need to do the .json, I just get the data back. I'm just going to call that data, and let's see what the typing is on that. So I hover over it. There is the result from that get API. Let's give it a try. So this is actually running the search. Bulba Sour, and we just get Bulbasaur. So cool. So this is a new concept for us. No router that I know of does anything like this. That's why I wanted to go and build it, because I thought, you know what? I'm tired of maintaining all these URLs myself, so I'm just going to build something that's going to do it for me. Now, the system currently works on React Router, so you can use it in your SPA application, and it works with the Next.js or App Router, as we've seen here, naturally. And, of course, the Next.js is giving you that type-safe routing, so it's taking use of everything that's there. So this is, I think, honestly, potentially competitive with something like TRPC, except that in this case, you actually get to control the API, where you don't get to do that with TRPC. And it's open source, and I'm looking for contributors. So jump on in if you want to. The water is fine. So in addition to working on declarative routing, I'm also creating a course on Next.js called ProNextJS.dev. There are two free tutorials you can access today from that course. One is on state management, and the other is on forms management. Get on that mailing list, and you get free access to those. Of course, in the meantime, if you have any questions or comments about declarative routing, please put that in the comments section right down below. If you like the video, hit that like button. If you really like the video, hit the subscribe button and click on that bell and be notified the next time a new blue collar coder comes out.